foster care, why you should take the kids that scare you the most. My name is Jen Avellaneta. My husband and I, we have been licensed foster parents for the past 17 years. As foster parents, the type of child that may scare us may be completely different. For one, it may be an infant. For another, it may be a sibling group. And for another, it may be a child that has behavioral concerns. Scary may be individual or unique to each family or each person. And as I read through the list today of certain groups of kids that may seem scary, I want you to think about which group maybe scares you the most. The first group of kids that may scare you the most are drug exposed infants. I was on the phone the other day with a mom and uh, she works full time and she has never been a biological parent before. And to her having a newborn infant, it was terrifying. She didn't want to have to put that child in daycare. She did not uh, know how to deal with a child that may be exposed to drugs or to alcohol. And so to her, that was the group of kids that above all the ages and all the different kinds of kids that may come into her home just really terrified her the most. Most. To a person that maybe has never been a parent before or who has only had typical kids, a child that is screaming or crying or, um, you know, is exposed to various drugs that may seem terrifying or scary, maybe even to you as you watch this. However, over the past 17 years, we have all had a lot of kids that have come into our home that have been exposed to various drugs to uh, meth and to cocaine and to fentanyl and to marijuana and um, I can tell you just from my experience that kids that come into care, their um, response to exposure in utero varies so much from child to child, from drug to drug. Um, there is so many factors that depends on how a child may respond. And so having a child who is drug exposed, it may sound scary. I'm sure when you took the classes to foster, they told you all the terrifying things. And some kids are, they are exposed extremely difficult. They have trouble sleeping and they cry and they're agitated and it can be extremely difficult to manage their behaviors. But at the same time, not every child who is exposed to drugs or to alcohol respond in the same way. And some of our sweetest babies, some of our calmest and, and, and just most precious little ones have technically on paper been exposed to drugs or alcohol, but have had no symptoms that we have seen or very mild symptoms symptoms that are extremely manageable as a foster parent. At the same time, some exposure in kids may not be seeing the effects of it until later on in life, when they're school age, when they're around other kids, when they're beginning to try to read or to write. And so we may not notice all the effects of drugs or alcohol to a baby who's been exposed. However, I do not want to discourage you. If you feel scared of taking a newborn who is exposed to drugs or alcohol, not all infants respond the same. And so that may be a a group that you may consider taking on a drug exposed infants because there are so many infants that need homes and possibly you could be one of them. The second group of kids that may feel scary to you is older children. And to that mom that I was sharing about with infants who was really hesitant to take newborns and infants and drug exposed babies, older kids, that was her niche. She wanted to have older kids, middle school and high school. It was just a great fit for her. At the same time, older, it may vary from person to person. So to one family, an older child may be a child that's two and up. It may be a child that's five and older. It may be high school. Um, so be, having an older child, it really just depends on you and what that age group is. And I can understand why older kids may seem terrifying. They have had such a bad rap in foster care. They have had movies made about them and TV series. And we have heard all the horrific stories about older kids who are in foster care. However, from my experience, older foster kids are not all the same. Again, like drug exposed infants, they may manage or handle the trauma that they 
they've experienced in different ways. They may have just lived with a grandparent and then got thrown into care because their grandparent died. And so to judge and to assume that just because a child is older, they are bad, um, that's really like a preconceived notion that I wanna discourage you from. Whether a child fits into your home uh, really depends on a lot of factors. It depends on your personality, on how you parent, um, your structure, whether you're home or not, um, the, the family dynamics that are in your home. And a child, whether they fit, really depends also on that child, their perspective of foster care, how many homes they've been in, um, really their mindset, what kind of abuse or neglect they endured. And so to try to determine that a child, just because they're older, will not fit into your home. And um, sometimes, honestly, that is just not right. Uh, we last summer had a 15 year old girl. I did not anticipate taking an older teenager. However, it was really just meant to be. And I knew that I was supposed to receive this call and receive this placement. This 15 year old little girl, she was incredible. She was sweet and kind and respectful. She didn't ask for things. She didn't demand things. She didn't, um, you know, blare her music or um, assert her voice in a domineering way. She did not disrupt our family in any way. Every single one of our family members just fell in love with this girl. She was just really the sweetest girl ever. And I hate to think if I judged her and said, she's older, I cannot take an older kid or a teenager and just assume because she was a teenager, she was bad. So please, as you consider whether you are called or meant to take the child who scares you, who may be a teenager, I encourage you to not, again, judge all kids as the same. Each one is so unique and the child that maybe didn't even fit into one home may fit into your home perfectly. The third group of children that may scare you or you may not want to take as a foster parent are kids with behavior needs. And kind of like older children, kids with behavior needs really have gotten a bad rap. Um, they are assumed that they are just bad or that they're broken or they just have trauma that cannot be overcome or those kids cannot adapt to an environment. And again, in my experience, which is really what I'm sharing, um, that is just not always the case. Uh, we had one girl that um, she was horrible in her previous foster home. I mean, horrible. Her behavior on paperwork was a mile long. Um, the things that she did, I mean, any foster parent would be terrified. But again, um, I knew that we were supposed to take this girl and we had her for a year. And honestly, she was an awesome, awesome kid. And we still love her and adore her today. And so um, again, a child, uh, just because they have behavior issues may not mean that they come out in your home. And even if they do, uh, you may be surprised at how well you can manage those behaviors with communication, with openness, with therapy. Um, and maybe your home is the perfect fit that that child has been waiting for. And I think although there is some great science about trauma that have come out and there is a lot of information about children who've been broken or hurt or disconnected or abused as children and those tools um, can be beneficial and helpful, I think sometimes when we hear the science we can categorize children. We can assume, well, they have this diagnosis of OCD or ADHD or attachment disorder or whatever that is, and we can become fearful. We can assume that they are a certain way or put them in a box, and we sometimes overlook this idea that each child is individual. They are unique. They are made up of different demographics, different history, different um, mental capacities, different understandings, different personalities. And I think as foster parents, it is so vital to take that into consideration when you are offered a child who uh, may potentially have behavior or labels in foster care. In addition, I think that kids with behavior um, issues, we somehow assume that they need a certain kind of family. They need a single parent or just a two parent household, or they need certain demographics or um, uh, different uh, boxes that they need to be in because of trauma or because of behaviors. However, one time a social worker told me that we cannot predict, and this is from a social worker who has done this for a long time. She said, we cannot necessarily predict 
how a child will behave and whether they will be successful in a home. You may have a child who has behavior issues and there's a family of 10 children and that child will adapt and fit perfectly into that family. And the day that she told me that, it was like eye-opening. It was like my idea of what I assumed or what I thought, it was just kind of blown away because I realized the moment that we try to make kids into robots, we try to assume that they're all the same. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be labeled with uh, some ideas or thoughts about me and put in a box and say I can or cannot do something or I will or will not succeed based on my past or, or something that happened to me in my past. In the same way, kids deserve a shot. Kids, even with behavior issues, have a chance to overcome. If you are willing to say yes, and take a chance on a child who has behavior issues. Number four is kids with special needs. And just to be honest, before when we first started uh, fostering kids with uh, behavior issues or kids with drug exposure, they didn't scare me. But growing up, I had never been around a lot of special needs kids. I didn't know how to interact with them. Um, I became I'm honestly a little terrified of having kids in my home that had really significant extra needs. And it wasn't until we started fostering kids that had hearing loss and adopting kids that had craniofacial microtia and atresia and um, other kinds of disabilities that I realized Kids with extra needs, they're not scary. They're just like any other kid. They just have extra things that they overcome to be successful in life. And what I've experienced with kids with extra needs are often kids that have significant or even minor extra needs. There is almost like a part of them that God has compensated or there is an extra addition of, of beauty about those children so much so that I love and um I love and enjoy taking kids that have extra needs and rising to the challenge because they are such beautiful souls. A year ago or so, I would have cringed at the thought of a hole in a baby's stomach and a G-tube that was there that a baby needed to be fed by. I would have been terrified of maybe a kid that has a Down syndrome or cerebral palsy. And yet today uh, we have a placement of a little girl who is failure to thrive, who um, is just teeny tiny and she has Down syndrome and a feeding tube. And I don't know if you can see behind me her oxygen and all the things that we need to do to, that is required to take care of this little girl. And at the same time, this little girl, yes, she's a lot of work. There are a lot of appointments. There's therapies and um, just meetings and so much time is going into taking care of this precious little life. But at the same time, it is so rewarding. And I can attest firsthand that kids with special needs, they really are an added beautiful blessing. And so as you begin to go down the list and question, what are the kids that scare you the most? I encourage you to maybe step into or even consider a child that comes into care that has special needs. And the fifth group of people that may scare you uh, as foster placements are sibling groups. Sibling groups are one of the biggest needs for foster placement in homes today. And I can understand why maybe you have considered not taking a placement that is a sibling group. Maybe your house is small. Maybe you're a single parent. Maybe you work full time. However, statistics show that between 65 and 85% of kids who are in foster care have a sibling. Of that group of kids, between 53% and 80% of those kids are separated from one or more of their siblings in foster care. Can you imagine just leaving your mom or your house or everything that you've ever known or loved and then the one person that has maybe walked through trauma and walked through the hardships of your childhood gets separated. You don't know where they're at. You don't know what family they're with. You don't know if they're safe. Maybe that's a child that you have cared for um, from the time that they were an infant and you have been the older brother or sister to that child. Imagine getting separated. It is like a double loss. It's like double heartbreak. And sadly, from what I've seen, a lot of kids who've been separated in foster care, 
they likely and most often they never get reunified back together again. Those kids are continually in foster care in separate homes and sometimes they may not even connect again for the rest of their life. They may not be able to find each other. They may get adopted and their names are changed. And imagine the tragedy of knowing that I have siblings in foster care, but I don't know where they are or what I could do about it. That must be a scary thing for a foster child. According to a 2011 study, and I shared this in another one of my videos about uh, taking foster siblings. I will try to add that link below, so make sure to check that out. Um, it says that kids who are in foster care together, they tend to be more successful. They are happy. They are more whole. They are more accomplished and they are more content because they have been with another sibling and they are not left to navigate this life all on their own. In addition, when kids are allowed to be raised in a foster home together, they go on and have stronger relationships with their biological siblings. They have memories from their childhood. They, they remember laying in a room and talking all night long or telling stories or going to the park together. They have connections with one another that really builds and uh, is a foundation for their lifelong relationships as adults. In addition, kids who are separated from their biological siblings, it is proven that they often, and not always, but often have less stable lives. They tend to feel more lonely and isolated and maybe are more medicated or maybe turn to drugs later on in life because they don't have that connection of a biological sibling. And as I share this, I understand that taking more than one child, taking a sibling group, maybe one child is significantly older than a baby that you want to take into your home, or maybe you feel like you're capable of taking girls, but not boys. But I encourage you, you are going to see um, a difference in those kids. You are going to see a connection between these kids. And often foster kids know that they get separated. So in my experience, when they're in a home together, they tend to be grateful. They tend to know that you are expending yourself on behalf of them so that you can allow siblings to remain in the same home together. So if you are nervous about taking multiple kids into your home that are biological siblings, I ask you just to think again and consider taking a biological sibling set. And these are my final thoughts. As foster parents, it is a scary thing. It's a scary thing to say yes, to change everything about your home, your life, your family, and open up your home to a child that you know nothing about. You don't know their history or their story. Um, you may know their name, their first name. Um, you may know their gender, but when a child comes into your home, I understand we've done this for a long time. It can be a super scary thing. And so in addition to that, to add on maybe a child that is even beyond your scope of what you think you are capable of, I get it. I get that it's easy to say no, to turn away, to say check off certain boxes and maybe only say yes to certain kids. However, we over the years have seen really God stretch our home and our, our hearts. Uh, we've had a really narrow view of what we thought we could take when we first started fostering over a dozen years ago. However, God has slowly really expanded that um, to take multiples, drug exposed infants, sibling groups, kids with behavior issues, and kids with medical needs. And so as you consider to say yes to foster kids, um, I really just want to encourage you that maybe not all kids are the same. And maybe a child that in another home is not successful, when they come into your home, it could be a perfect fit and they could be a great addition to your in particular family. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for our next video. And remember, as always, go out, live bold and be brave.